Hey everybody, it's James Freeman. Today's video is about two teens that are charged with killing an eight-year-old girl. But the problem is, these boys didn't kill anybody. It was the police that fired the rounds that ended this little girl's life. The story begins on the night of August 27, 2021 in Sharon Hill, Pennsylvania, a suburb of Philadelphia, at a high school football game. After the game, as people were leaving the stadium, a fight broke out between 16-year-old Angelo Ford and 19-year-old Hassin Strand. The argument escalated and gunfire was exchanged between the two young men. There's no doubt the behavior of these two young men was reckless and careless, and they should certainly be charged for the crimes that they allegedly committed. They didn't just endanger the lives of each other, but everyone around them as they exchanged gunfire. While the behavior was reckless, careless, and probably incredibly scary for those around these two young men, luckily no one was injured. But let us not forget that there is no human situation so bad that it can't be made worse by the presence of a police officer. Sharon Hill police officers sprung into action like super troopers, appearing to just shoot anything and everything that moved. While it appears that the original suspects failed to hit any of their targets, Sharon Hill police managed to injure three people and kill one with their gunfire. They claimed to have opened fire on a vehicle because they saw it leaving the scene, but none of the occupants of the vehicle were involved in the shooting in any way. In their barrage of gunfire on the innocent civilians in the vehicle, three people were injured, and eight-year-old Fanta Bellitti was shot in the back by police officers, resulting in her death. Surely, we would think that the people who unloaded their magazines into a vehicle full of innocent people would be held accountable for their own actions, right? I'm in no way saying that the reckless behavior of Angelo and Hassin is in any way excusable. But the gunfire exchange between the two young men was a completely separate incident from the gunfire that was unloaded into a car full of innocent people by the police. But Delaware County District Attorney Jack Stolsteamer chose to charge the boys with the actions of the police officers and has chosen not to charge the police with anything. In my own words, the prosecutor's argument is that if the boys hadn't have started a gunfight in the first place, then the police wouldn't have had to show up and randomly shoot at anything that moved. And therefore, the young men should be charged with the actions of the police. Fanta's family members are not happy with the situation. While they want justice served, they want it served on those who are actually responsible for the death of their loved one. The family's attorney, Bruce Castor, says a second set of DAs and detectives are working on whether the police should be arrested and charged for their recklessness and failure to follow their training and understanding you don't shoot at a moving car and you definitely don't shoot at a moving car unless you're sure the bad guys are inside fleeing a felony. We will always have people in our society that seek to do harm and to victimize others. And allegedly, we have a system to deal with people like this. However, we have seen how this system has protected certain people from facing the consequences of their actions, while putting people who haven't harmed anyone in cages. 1800s economist and philosopher Frederick Bastiat spoke of a system such as this. When plunder becomes a way of life for a group of men living together in a society, they create for themselves in the course of time a legal system that authorizes it and a moral code that glorifies it. You do not live in a system of law and order. You live in a system of the guy with the biggest stick wins. And it's about time you open your eyes and see it.